For those who follow me on social media, you know that I recently had the second volume of my comic printed. Yay! <laughs> Though you may not know, I had to have it completely reprinted. The cover did not come out at all like I wanted it to, and this was a really important learning experience, and now I'm making this video because I do not want anyone else going through this same stress and financial pain. Fortunately, I only printed a small number of copies, so it didn't break the bank. The printer I worked with helped me out a lot in this situation. I'll be going more into who I use for my printer and how they helped very shortly. First, I'll quickly go into a bit of background here since you all know I am a graphic designer. Shouldn't I know better to avoid these mistakes? Well, I've actually been working in apparel printing for the past nine years. And in apparel printing, we use mainly Pantone colors very specific and limited color palettes for our particular needs or a different color process altogether. I won't go into the details now, but I'll make a video about it in the future. So if you are interested in learning more about apparel printing and merchandise for your comic, be sure to subscribe. In short, I actually have little experience working with CMYK on a digital printer. So the issue that happened with the cover is that it printed out very, very dark. Like I opened the box and noticed it right away how dark it was. So dark that many details went missing. I'm going to try and replicate the best I can on screen here so you can see the difference. It's probably fine for some people, but I knew if I show this to a publisher or a professional, they'll notice it too, so I knew I'd be embarrassed by it and needed to fix it. The printer I was working with, who I also worked with on Volume 1, is Mixum. They mostly do other print materials, but also have a section for comics. They ended up being incredible during this process, and I really recommend them. They actually have a free sample pack you can order, and I cannot recommend enough to get one of these packs. It's just super helpful in determining paper weight and finish. I'll get into these things a bit later in the video, but first, the color disaster. I've got my original cover in Photoshop here, and as you can see, it is pretty dark. It's supposed to be dramatic, and I knew it would print out darker than this. I actually even bumped up the colors a bit here to take that into account. I'm going to click Control U here, and this will bring up the Hue, Saturation, and Lightness sliders. This is also available if you use Clip Studio Paint. If you go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Hue, Saturation, Luminosity. It's exactly the same thing, I just prefer to use Photoshop in this case. I also use Photoshop CS6, so if you use Creative Cloud, it will look a bit different. I'll slide down the lightness a little bit here. And this is about more what I was expecting, like a few levels darker than on screen. I'm going to adjust it a bit more through using the levels to show you more closely like what it printed as. So this is closer to how it actually printed. This still isn't completely accurate because you can still see his hands. And in the print version, his hands almost completely disappear. It was just very, very dark. So why did this happen? And how can we prevent this and make sure your colors look good when you have your book printed? There's a few things to go into here, and some of this I knew, and some of this is advice from Mixum support. First, I have to talk about the limitations in general with CMYK colors. Most people watching probably know that CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. CMYK is of subtractive color space. This means that as the colors overlap, light is subtracted from it, so the colors will become darker. This means if a color isn't pure cyan, magenta, or yellow, it's difficult to get it to be very bright. This is why greens, blues, and reds tend to be less bright and more difficult to achieve. In fact, many shades just don't exist in CMYK printing. 
If I go to the brightest red in the color picker, you will see this little warning symbol appear. This means the color is outside the gamut for printing. So it doesn't matter if I move it a bit left or a bit down, these colors just do not exist in CMYK. In Photoshop, I can click the little warning symbol and it will bring me to the closest color available for printing. So no matter what I choose around in this area, when I click this, it will still bring me back to this color. You can see here that the values are magenta at 98, yellow at 97, and I can even adjust these up to 100 and 100. And this is the brightest red you can get with CMYK printing. I can click around in my image, and no matter where I land here, everything is within the CMYK color gamut. There isn't any warning popping up here. That's because my color profile is set to CMYK. If it is within the gamut though, then why did it print out so dark? Well, the biggest reason is because this monitor I'm viewing on, it's in RGB values. It's a completely different color space than the printer, so it's literally impossible for it to be 100% accurate, even with color calibration. Not only that, but color spaces can be broken down even further, so it's even more difficult to get completely accurate colors. So my monitor on my home computer here looks different from my monitor on my work computer, even though they are both displaying RGB colors. Furthermore, the CMYK values from Mixum's digital printer is going to be different from another printer's digital printer or from an offset printer typically used for large runs of books. It's also going to differ a lot from your home printer. Another reason for the dark colors is the finish on the cover. For my original comic, I chose a gloss laminated finish and it looks pretty nice though it was still a bit darker than on screen. For this second volume, however, I decided to do something a little different and went with a matte finish. This meant it would have a duller look since it wouldn't be as reflective. I knew this was going to happen, but it was still beyond my expectations. This isn't a huge contributor, but it is one nonetheless. The third big reason why this happened is because of the ink coverage. As I mentioned, with CMYK printing, the colors overlap to create different colors, and as they do so, the colors get darker and closer and closer to black, the absence of light. As these dots of colors overlap, well, if you have ever painted, you know what happens when you mix a lot of paints together. They become more muddy, more dark, and then you have to add white to get it lighter again. With CMYK printing though, we don't have white available to make the color lighter again, so it can't be made brighter. This means if you have a lot of CMYK dots overlapping to form a color, it becomes saturated with ink, which very quickly becomes black. Mixum told me they recommend no more than 300% ink coverage. But what does that mean and how do we figure it out? Luckily, this is very easy because what it is referring to is the added values of CMYK ink in use. Each of these values can go up to 100%. So if you add them all together, they will become 400%. You want to make sure when you add them all together that they do not exceed 300% and actually staying under 250 is best. A calculator is useful for doing this quickly, so I'll just add these numbers together. And you can see I get 270. Because it is over 250, I would not recommend using this color. Mixum has a really good resource on their website that covers this more in detail, so I highly recommend reviewing it since they go into a bit more than I'm able to in this video. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. It's a pretty short and quick read and just super, super helpful. A must read for anyone who will print a comic or any color illustration. As I was correcting the colors in my cover, I try to stay away from any colors in this bottom part of the color picker, about the bottom one fourth or one fifth 
of the box. Basically, anything in this area is going to appear like black or almost black. You don't have to keep all of your colors above here, but if you do have a very dark illustration, then it is probably helpful to do so. You can also see when I bring the color picker to the bottom here, the RGB values all go to zero. This means this is pure RGB black but you would expect the CMYK values to all be 100%, right? Or at the very least, cyan, magenta, and yellow would be zeros, and black would be 100%. Well, no, you would only get 100% black with one color printing, but with CMYK, you don't need all these colors to be 100% to reach black. Actually, I believe different printers will even use different CMYK mixes to get black. You don't want to have too much ink on here because it will become saturated, it will take longer to dry, and the color could bleed and become muddy. Next, I had to correct the colors. Photoshop was really helpful since it's just really good at color correction. And here is the end result. It's now much brighter. Some areas are still pretty dark since it was difficult to bring them up, and a lot of the background still printed almost black, but there is more contrast here between like his back and the background here, and you can actually see the form of the character now. I also brought up a lot of the reds and the yellows, and that also helped brighten up the entire illustration. To achieve this result, I played around a lot with the curves and levels. Curves is Control M and Levels is Control L. These options are available in Clip Studio Paint as well under Edit, Tonal Correction, Tone Curve, and Edit, Tonal Correction, Level Correction. You can also go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Color Balance to adjust the overall balance of the colors and I will do this now in Photoshop for this cover. You can really just mess around with these a lot, just move some arrows around, see what they do, and try to get a result you like. Always save a copy in case you want to start over. One more thing I'd like to go over quickly is about the paper weight for your cover. For my first book, I chose a 110 pound paper weight. For this volume two, I decided to go for the slightly lighter 100 pound paper weight. This ended up being another mistake. Actually, in the free samples they send, the comic sample does use 100 pound paper and looks great. However, the comic is also a saddle stitched comic. This means it has few pages and the binding is done with staples. For my book, however, it's many more pages and is perfect bound. This means it uses glue for the binding. So the 100 pound paper may be fine for a short saddle stitch comic, but I don't think it's good for a longer perfect bound comic. The issue is the corners are pending up very easily. So next time I'll definitely be going with the 110 pound paper since my first volume didn't have this issue and it did have the gloss laminate finish so it looks a bit nicer. If you can afford it, you may try experimenting with what would work well for your personal comic. If you have had any experience printing or are considering it, please tell me about it in the comments. I'd really like to hear about experiences and concerns from others. Printing is a beast. There's a lot of stuff to know, but help and resources do exist so we can gain that knowledge that will allow us to succeed and make beautiful books. If this video helped you out or you learned something new, please leave a like and a subscribe. I have tons of videos to make and there will be more resources coming and every little bit of support you can give is incredibly huge in helping me create more videos. May our journey for creating colorful comic covers be easy and fun.